I just had a blast. I'm like, put it on my tombstone. Like it's not getting better than this. You know, it was really, really special. Welcome to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast, a weekly podcast providing career and creative inspiration to help you build a purpose-filled life. If you're interested in tapping into your creative potential, pursuing a career with passion, and building on your biggest and best resource, yourself, please join me on this path. I'm your host, Nancy Moore, and I want you to know that I'm on this journey with you. So let's get started. Today, I want to talk to you about change. Change can be really hard, and for a lot of people, it is. For Kate Atkinson, the person that I'm visiting with today, she chose to embrace her change. Her change occurred, a big change in life occurred following a divorce, and she was living in the LA area, and her kids were going to school with A-list celebrities' kids, and she decided to move back to Tulsa, where she's from. Interestingly enough, After she moved back, after she relocated, she had the opportunity to work with an A-list celebrity. And we talk about who that celebrity is and how she had the opportunity to work with them in our interview. We also talk about her superpower, which is a really good one. We talk about how she is able to manage her stress and what she does to take time for herself So she's able to thrive in her business and for her kids. And then we also talk about her business. Her business is Chef Kate Tulsa. You can find her on social media. And we talk about the fun things that she has going on with Chef Kate Tulsa. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Chef Kate. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy Moore. I'm the host of the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast, and this is Kate. Hi. Kate Atkinson, and she has Chef Kate Tulsa. Yes, I do. On Instagram, check me out. Chef Kate Tulsa, formerly known as Kate's Cheese Shop, doing a little pivot, doing a little rebrand, so... We're Definitely gonna, check me out on Instagram. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Okay, good. So I had the opportunity to meet Chef Kate at a, an event uh, Alyssa Rosenheck did at T.A. Lorton. And I just immediately felt a connection with her. Um, we've kind of kept up on social media. And so I'm thrilled to have I know. you here today. Well, Nancy, I went up to Nancy and I met her and she said, I'm Nancy. And I said, oh, I love the name Nancy. That's my grandmother's <gasps> I name. I remember that. <laughs> I, I've always loved that name. So yeah. I knew you were a good soul just based on that. So, well, yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, I'm happy to have Kate here today. She's got, if you do follow Kate, she has so many amazing things that she has got going. And um, so we're going to hear about some of those today. But she's had a lot of interesting things happen to her in the last few years. Yes. Actually, probably your whole life. But I know about the last... It's, yeah. It's been a fun-filled last couple of years, for sure. Yeah. Lots of lots of things going on. So, yeah. Lots to discuss. Yeah. yeah. Good. So one of the things, when I say Chef Kate, she is actually a trained... Le Cordon Bleu. Yeah. So from Paris. Yeah. So after college, I didn't go straight to work. I thought a lot of my undergrad degree was study abroad. I was a Spanish major at University of Tulsa and I did a lot of study abroad in Spain and I loved that. That was Mm -hmm. like, I totally thrived on that in my college experience. So I thought, how can I continue to study abroad, live abroad? That was just like my thing. I just totally thrived. So I, um, like every girl, I had seen the movie Sabrina growing up, the Audrey Hepburn version, and she goes to Le Cordon Bleu in Paris. And I was like, that would just be like the experience of a lifetime. It's not like a professional pursuit at all. I'm just going to go for two and a half months and live in Paris and eat baguettes every day and like, you know, all of the quintessential Parisian things. And so... I went and um, my first day there, they were speaking in French and I had taken French classes in college, but I mean, super basic, did not speak French at all. And um, so That's that was, intimidating. yeah. And, and the chefs there are very proud, you know, these Frenchmen with their puffed out chests. There's like this whole like 
they have this whole like aura like they're very you know quintessential french chef with the hat and everything and um that was like an amazing just like it was like a movie like it honestly was surreal living there and going to school there and through that it was like a beginner course to get like a whole like certificate or a whole diploma and it was the beginning course for two and a half months and I just loved it every day we would have like a demonstration class for two and a half hours the chef would cook for you and talk to you about the menu talk to talk to you about the recipe you were making he would make several recipes over the course of two and a half hours then you would take that um, knowledge go into the kitchen we had all these uniforms we had the chef's coat and a tie and a little like wedge cap and like special like little shoes and our knife bags and everything and we'd go into the kitchen and we would cook the recipe and um, it was just incredible we would have we would present this recipe at the end of that class to um, our practical chef and he would he or she would taste it and rate it and it was like so you know it was like so nerve-wracking because you wanted them to love it and to give you good feedback so it was um, two and a half months of that and then I came home and I said I want to go back like I have to go back and I ended up going back for about a year and um, completing intermediate um, advanced and then um, I did along the way two uh, wine certifications. Wow! So it was a it was an amazing experience. Okay. Yeah. So when you came back after that two and a half months, and you started feeling like I want to go back to Paris and back to Tulsa, but you started feeling like you wanted to go yes. back to Paris. Were your parents on board with that? With you oh my going gosh. back, or tell me about they that? They were so on board. My parents have like really instilled like shout out Tom and Joni, they've really instilled this like love of travel and just like experiences and, mm -hmm. you know, anything like positive, nurturing, like um, educational, they are all for it. So they were super uh, supportive. And actually in the meantime, between coming back home and awaiting to go back for intermediate, I worked for Justin Thompson. He was just mm -hmm. opening Juniper at the time. Mm -hmm. And I went to him and I said, hey, I've, you know, I've never worked in a restaurant before. I've worked as a barista previously, mm -hmm. but I just went to culinary school for two and a half months. I would love to come work in your kitchen. Like, give me any job. Like, I'll do it, whatever. And he was nice enough, gracious enough to be like, yeah, like, come on, like join us. And it was just this team of a bunch of guys like who had worked in kitchens for years who mm -hmm. were just like amazing. And I was like, so in awe of all of their knowledge and skills. And like, it was interesting having that technical education from mm -hmm. culinary school and then having the, the restaurant and the, the restaurant is where you learn these hacks and you learn speed and you learn on the fly there's somebody who just came in who has to have this right now you learn that it's like this incubator of intensity and like pure adrenaline a lot of times because that was a very busy restaurant mm -hmm. as most justin thompson restaurants mm -hmm. are all the time right. you know right. so it was really a great education and opportunity to learn the the restaurant side and he was nice enough to hold my position for me to go back to culinary school get my diploma and then come back and work again in his kitchen. So that was a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love I love that you wanted to come back to Tulsa. I know this is home for yes. you, but you probably could have gone a lot of other places, especially with your love of travel, but you yes. came back to Tulsa. Yes, love Tulsa. Yeah. Lifelong, I've lived other places. Um, I've lived in Dallas, Paris, Spain, um, Los Angeles, and then um, in 2019, I ultimately moved back to Tulsa and I'm like, this is where we're going to be for, mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really great to be back. I really appreciate it more now, more than ever. Yeah. yeah. Tulsa is an amazing city, but it has grown tremendously so just even in the past five years. You know, it has, it has a lot Absolutely. to offer. It does. Yeah. So um, let me ask about having a mentor have you ever had a mentor? I've had those special people in life 
who have been, you know, teachers that have really believed in me. Mm -hmm. I had a Spanish teacher at University of Tulsa named Dr. Chris Anderson. He was the head of the Spanish department. I'm not academically, I don't, I don't want to be in a classroom. Like Mm -hmm. I'm all about like, you know, hands-on, like out in the world kind of a thing. And he really believed in me and helped me ultimately graduate, which was really nice to have that that mm-hmm. bachelor's degree mm-hmm. under my belt and behind me. So he was a great mentor professionally. Justin Thompson was really great to give me a chance. And it's so funny how 10 years later, now our children are in the same school and I just helped with a fundraiser at the school and I had him do all the food. So you never know when your paths are going to cross later. Like when I left my job at Juniper, I was so grateful for the opportunity. And then, you know, 10 years later, we're working together again. And Mm -hmm. it's been like that. I mean, we've worked together multiple times and it's always, you know, he's super professional and he's a great guy to work with. And, um, Yeah, uh, there's so many like um, women uh, business leaders in town who um, I really look up to, Mm -hmm. like Annie Brady with Magpie. She's been awesome. We always joke that every time we have a meeting together, we get in like these soulful, deep convos and we're just kind of on the same page with that. And it's just neat to see, you know, what she's done with her creativity. And I really am inspired by that. I'm inspired by Tracy Salisbury. Oh, yeah. um, with T.A. Lorton. Yes. I mean, that store is just like a world-class, amazing boutique furniture home store that has been around for, mm-hmm. did she just celebrate 13 years? I might be selling it short. It might be like 15 to 20. I know, like, there was I'm a like, big celebration. It's I, can't, been like, I can't remember. It's been a long, yeah. years and years and years, multiple locations, and now she's in that great space that she totally gutted and made her own, and it's just really cool. So people like that, that kind of stand out to me. But my biggest motivation, of course, you know, as a mom are, are my children. So they keep me grounded and they keep me focused on like, okay, what are we doing now? Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. I, I will mention this and probably because you are a mom. Kate posts really great recipes, and I hope that continues through your rebranding. Absolutely. Great, easy recipes that are very helpful for busy families. Oh, my gosh. People and people will say, like, well, don't you love to make, like, French, like, elaborate? And at the end of the day, like, when it's for my family, I'm like, I want to do the easiest, like, path of least resistance. I don't want to do some complicated thing with like a heavy sauce. Like I want it to be healthy Mm -hmm. and I really have to pat myself on the back because my kids will really eat a variety of foods. Oh yeah. That's great. And I'm like so happy that they've started on that track of liking certain vegetables and you know, different cuisines. And so that's, that's been kind of fun as a mom to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I want to jump ahead or move on because one of the stories that I wanted to hear about is how you got to be a personal chef for Robert De Niro when he was here filming. um, It was actually for Martin Scorsese. Oh yeah. So but, thank yeah, you. It's no, they, it's all, it's all, yeah, in <laughs> okay. that same um, stratosphere for well, sure. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool opportunity. It was the kind of thing where, well, I had just moved home from Los Angeles back to Tulsa. I was going through a divorce at the time. Mm-hmm. It was not the best like state personally. And I had just started my um, catering business, Kate's Cheese Shop, and I was doing all these really cool charcuterie boards and boutique kind of like caterings. So that was going on. And I was like personal chefing for a few clients. And Chef Valerie Carter, shout out to her. She's an amazing powerhouse chef and mom. And we worked together on Edible Tulsa Magazine. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was a contributor for that, and she was a contributor. She was the editor, actually. Okay. Um, and food stylist. And she called me up one day and said, hey, there's this job for personal chefing on Killers of the Flower Moon movie that they're shooting. And I was like, okay. Like, this was April of 2021. And she's like, are you still personal chefing? I was like, absolutely. Let's connect. You know, let's all talk to whomever. And... um. I got a phone call from like his assistant and uh, we kind of just did a quick, you know, interview over the phone and 
I thought, wow, this is a really cool thing to be in the running for. Like, mm-hmm. I wonder what will happen next. Mm-hmm. And that was on a Wednesday. And then on a Thursday, I was hired. And then I went to work in Bartlesville on a Friday. So it all happened so fast. And at that moment, it was like, went from just like catering, you know, in between when I could do it and get babysitters or my parents or whatever. And then it went to full-time job all day, you know, gone from like eight in the morning till 11 o'clock at night kind of a thing. And so it's like one of those opportunities where you're like, say yes and figure out the details later because... Mm -hmm. At that moment, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to figure out like childcare, have my parents help get a nanny, you know, because I have my kids most of the time. So it was a big time commitment away. But I knew that this was an opportunity that was never going to happen again in the Mm -hmm. same situation. So say yes and figure out the details later. And I was like on the road to Bartlesville every day, commute for an hour, which in Tulsa is a big deal. Other places, you know, our commute's normal. But Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was it was amazing. And um, I was really thinking that Friday night, I have to cook the meal of my life, because if I don't, what if they hate my food? What if I get a phone call on the way home? Um, yeah, it's like not going to work out, uh, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. And I was just like, oh my God, what, what do I make? Like the possibilities are endless. And it was such an honor to have that kind of professional accomplishment. And it was just kind of ironic because I had just moved home from LA. My kids were like at school with A-list celebrity parents. And I would see people just like walking around. You just see people like celebrities in LA. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going back to Tulsa. Like that, that whole novelty thing is over. So it was so funny just being in Bartlesville and cooking and like Leonardo DiCaprio's in the film, Robert De Niro, Mm -hmm. you know, it was these major A-list stars. And it was just like, kind of like, surreal it was just like what like is this like Mm -hmm. this is crazy Mm -hmm. so um that started in april of 2021 and they concluded uh shooting in september so it was a good six month oh yeah stint it was amazing and i was so proud of myself that i was Mm -hmm. able to have the stamina and you know all the experience leading up to that really set me up for success as far as like creating really special menus for the client and his family and extended web of employees and things. Um, The really neat thing about it was just experiencing the ecosystem Mm -hmm. of what goes on around the, the client because it was a network of assistants and there was another chef that worked on set and there was just all these people that made the world go round, so to speak. And everybody's like totally on top of their game and totally supportive of one another. And it was really cool to experience that. And I just had a blast. I'm like, put it on my tombstone. Like it's not getting better than this. You know, it was really, really, really special. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and at the end of the job, he gave me a souvenir poster of an Osage Indian artist made Um, kind of a tapestry artwork and then they put a photograph of Scorsese on front on the front of it and then he wrote dear Kate thank you for the exquisite cuisine Martin Scorsese you know killers of the flower moon and he also signed a book and so that those were like keepsakes that I like totally I mean I immediately took it to the framers I'm like (laughs) like this can't even be in my house yet like I need this to be like behind museum glass like this is like I will have this forever it was just it was a really neat other than the memories that you know keepsake that I got to take home from the film and it it was it was awesome I had never been on a movie set before and that was crazy just the amount of people that it employed it was really cool and Another thing I will say, the attention to detail and the genuine concern for representing the Osage Indian people for this, you know, particular story, the the amazing book, Killers of the Flower Moon, they really wanted to get it right and do it right by their people. Mm -hmm. They were very respectful and it was just really cool to see that kind of reverence 
And, um, you know, it, it was um, really an honor to be a part of that whole production. Mm-hmm. It was great. It'll be great for, for Tulsa and for Oklahoma mm-hmm. just to have that as, you know, kind of a feather in our caps. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I love that you said yes to that opportunity. Oh, yeah. Even though it was during a transition where when you probably could have easily said no, you decided to say yes. Yeah, absolutely. But you said your personality, you kind of are spontaneous. So spontaneous, probably to a fault. I'm very curious. So if something sparks my curiosity, Mm -hmm. I'm like all over it. I have Mm -hmm. to explore it. I have to explore it or like I can't think about anything else. That's such a huge asset, being curious about things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me ask real quick before I forget. What was the meal that you made that Friday night? I made a... Do you remember? Yes, I do. It was a miso black cod, and I did a little vegetable salad, and then I think I... Oh, I know what I did. I did an appetizer of a grapefruit avocado and bib lettuce salad with like a really good herb vinaigrette and then I did a dessert that was and I am not a dessert chef and that was another thing that was like it pushed me I I made desserts every single day and I was like I learned that I can make desserts I was kind of like okay like I can do that um I made a (laughs) lemon curd and then it was mixed berries with like um, candied pecans and then coconut whipped cream and like cinnamon on top. It was really good, but like semi-healthy-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was that part of it? Did he want to, I mean, you're cooking with all fresh ingredients, but was there, is there anything you can share as far as what he really preferred? Um, You know, I will say and by the way, I have so much respect and admiration for him. He's a hard worker. He's a legend. He's amazing. He's he's a great family man. He's wonderful. Um, I made a lot of Italian food. He's like, you know, from this is all Googleable. Mm-hmm. He's he's from New York. He's mm-hmm. Italian, so he likes that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I had some parameters. Okay. Yeah. Because it, it seems like, you know, people do have their favorites, of course. celebrities. And yes. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. Just like uh, the stars, they're just like us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Absolutely. It's yeah. just that's their career. That's yeah. their job. So mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear more about Chef Kate Tulsa, what you are doing, what if people follow you on Instagram, what will they see and you know what tell me about sure. that business venture. so on follow me on instagram you'll see lots of recipes you'll see lots of um different techniques that i do little like secrets and tidbits um and just like kind of like hacks and like um easy meals that you can make like honestly for your family um and then you're going to see lots of pictures from like my super high-end caterings and um basically what i'm doing is I'm transitioning from Kate's Cheese Shop, which is primarily like personal chefing and charcuterie, a lot of charcuterie. I'm kind of like transitioning away from that. As soon as I started that, like 50 businesses popped up. Like Mm -hmm. it's like such a big thing now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's kind of like taking care of the one thing that's a really good niche for me that I feel like I bring a lot of value to is personal chefing and, mm-hmm. and pop-up dinners. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to start through my website having a pop-up dinner, but people are going to be able to get on there, buy a ticket, and come to a undisclosed location to like, you know, the week before kind of a thing and have a really special coursed out meal and be able to enjoy a conversation with different people and you know, everybody's like a foodie. And Mm -hmm. when I cook for people, everyone's always like, I'm such a foodie. What's your favorite thing? Like, where do you, what's like your favorite restaurant in Paris? Like they just want to talk about food. So when you get around like a a long table of people, you know, filled with foodies, it's like really interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. So, um, that'll be really special. And I was inspired by an experience I had in Paris called Hidden Kitchen. And that was back in 2011 or earlier. But yeah, there there were a husband and wife and they would release tickets like on their website 
and you could buy a ticket and then the day before they'd send you the address and you would like go and it was like totally like on the down low, really cool experience. So I, I hope to replicate that. Okay. Yeah. Y'all neat. You're in Tulsa. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, I also, I know you're a mom and yes. have two amazing girls. I do. Yes. I'm very lucky. Yes. They, um, yes, they're darling Thank and you. I know they keep you busy, but also, um, one thing that I wanted to mention is Kate is getting her pilot's license. Yes. And I so am. she has, <laughs> in addition to everything <laughs> she has going, including the girls, yes, she's getting her pilot pilot's license. So tell me yes. how that came about, how you're progressing with, with that and yes. what you're hoping to so do long term with I that. have kind of always been like a little bit of a nervous flyer. It's never held me back from traveling because I love traveling, but I was like kind of scared of flying. I would, you know, sometimes like medicate on a, on a long flight. Mm -hmm. I would just be like sweating profusely and very scared and like, what's that noise? And like turbulence, like turbulence, like totally freaked me out. And then, you know, having kids, you can't really like be out of it, like on the flight or whatever. So um, I've kind of, like everything else, like if you arm yourself with the facts, you know, if you like really delve into something like flying, like if you're scared and you're like, okay, I'm going to learn how this airplane works. I'm going to fly it. I'm going to learn everything mm -hmm. I can about it. It really takes away that fear because I'm basically at, okay, so I started this about six months ago, I have a, um, an instructor, a flying instructor. And right now I'm attempting to get my private pilot's license. So that means I can fly for pleasure. I'm not like commercially flying a plane or anything. It's just for me and wherever I want to go kind of a thing. So I'm basically learning on the plane that everybody learns on, which is a Cessna 172 Skyhawk, which is a glorified lawnmower up in the sky. Like, it's just like, <laughs> I don't know. Oh. <laughs> like, it's just like this little, like single engine propeller prop plane. It's the most mass produced plane in the world, but it's super reliable. It's safe. It's just like the most like common, easiest plane to learn on. You have to get 40 hours of fly time, which is way too few for me. I'm going to want way more before I'm soloing, but you're supposed to get at least 40 hours and then you have some tests. You have to pass a health exam, but yeah, mainly it's those getting those hours in with the instructor. And that's mm -hmm. been really fun. We've been flying to, we flew to Ponca City and landed at the FBO there and had dinner. There was a Mexican restaurant at the FBO, totally random. We flew to Bentonville, Arkansas the other day, flew over all these chicken farms. And oh, it's just yeah. cool to see like from, you know, you're at 3,500 feet. It's neat to see Oklahoma from that it's like it's like when you're landing on a big plane and you start to see like houses it's like mm -hmm. right there in that mm -hmm. like so you can kind of like see everything and it's really beautiful it's been so much fun and so thrilling and it's just been awesome so I don't know where it will take me but so far it's just been great and just to be able to know how to fly a plane like what if like I'm always like doomsday I'm like what if there was like you know, we got like deserted on a desert island, but we found a plane and I could like take off. Like, so it's just really, it's just cool to have that knowledge. Yeah. I'm all about like random knowledge, random skills that are in my back pocket. One day I might use it. It's That's incredible. So the funny. stuff that you know, <laughs> really. I, well, it's just fun. I just, I do it for fun. Honestly, it, it's really, and it's something for me. And as a mom, you know, I've learned you really have to do things just for you because if you put all of your eggs in one basket and you all you do is focus on your kids you're never going to be the best mom you could be if you're taking care of yourself too like on the side like we were talking about yeah. self-care mm -hmm. it's really important to have that balance and that's what we all strive for is balance. Mm -hmm. It's the hardest thing to attain. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I really credit my yoga practice has really, oh, I could cry. It's like saved my life. Like having that feeling of being grounded and taking care of myself first. It's like mm -hmm. put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then, you know, the child. It's honestly, I could not be 
a good mom without doing those things. Mm -hmm. So it's like mandatory. Mm -hmm. Like even if I don't want to do it, Mm -hmm. I make myself do it Mm because it's that important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that focus. And that probably helps you get through all that you have going on. So yes, for sure. Well, I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you, Nancy. It's been so fun. I know it's been awesome talking to you too. Well, I am excited for people to check you out and I'm Thanks. looking forward to following along on your journeys and yes. hopefully attending a dinner. So we'll I see. would love to have you. That would be awesome. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap on this week's episode. I want to thank you for listening to the Sharing Passion and Purpose podcast. It means the world to me and I'd love to connect with you. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at sharing passion and purpose and Twitter at passion sharing. Also, if you like this podcast, it would mean a lot to me for you to subscribe, rate and review it. And as always, all my show notes will be available on my website, sharingpassionandpurpose.com.